Hey friends, my name is Kirsten and welcome back to Twin Talks Ballet. Oh my goodness, y'all. You know, you know, if you've been watching me for a while that I love challenging the status quo in the ballet community. I just love saying things like, you know what dancers, there is not just one definition of success. You are more than what your body can do. I love just expanding our ideas of what it looks like to live well as a dancer and to really enjoy the fruits of your labor and to find success as you define it in the ballet world. I love challenging the status quo. Another thing I love that I feel I need to always keep in balance in order to serve you guys truthfully is I love to just share with y'all some things that we just have to get over, accept, and push through as dancers because it's so important to not hold an overly ideal vision of what the what our journey should look like we need to be realistic we need to be accepting that life is hard being a ballet dancer is inherently making it a little harder for yourself but also wonderful beautiful fruitful rewarding in many ways so i just like to be honest about some of the really hard realities so you guys are prepared to face that you don't feel defeated when you experience these things. And of course, I always give some tips for moving through these challenges with grace and acceptance. So <laughs> we're going to balance the two sides of former professional ultra hardcore ballet Kirsten and mindset coach. I just want everyone to be happy Kirsten. And that is where this video is coming from. So stay tuned for seven things you literally just have to push through if you want to be a professional ballet dancer. The first one is being tired. You cannot ease up on yourself or make excuses for yourself if you're tired. Everybody's tired. It's a very emotionally, mentally, physically, just all around demanding career. Very demanding. The training, the actual career, all of it. A lot of you know what you're getting into, of course, and we know like logically, yeah, everybody's tired, it's exhausting, but I find that so many dancers will give themselves an excuse to let up on their standards or slowly, slowly, slowly become more lazy over time because they're like, oh, I'm tired. You just have to get over it. Everybody's tired. The question is, are you going to accept it and do what you can through that fatigue and still hold yourself to a high standard? Or are you going to obey your body's temptation to just take it easy, to just take it easy? It's just one day, you know, there are the little voices going on in the back of the head, but you really just have to, well, first you have to know the difference between when you're injured, that's a different thing. I'm not necessarily, I'm not going to touch on like, what to do when you're injured in this video that will come up in future videos, I'm sure. But um, I'm just speaking about general fatigue or mental exha exhaustion. You have to still show up, keep your standards high, do the work, don't make justifications or excuses for yourself. Just really apply yourself, do everything that you can to really show up fully engaged, still working really, really hard. and. I think a great way, two great strategies for just getting through this when you do really feel exhausted, because um, I'm not just trying to give you a verbal spanking, don't worry, always giving you strategies to cope with these things. Um, the first is that I actually find it's super crucial to understand how to surrender to your discomfort or surrender to the fatigue. Surrendering is very different than giving up. It's not. I personally, like the way I apply the concept of surrender, it might be different than what you're thinking. So for me, it looks like when I'm doing an adagio and I feel really uncomfortable, my leg is shaking, I'm holding my leg up, I want nothing more. My body wants nothing more than to just stop and like sit down, take a break. I just want to stop, it's so uncomfortable. Instead of giving up and giving in to my body's desire to not be comfortable, I have an opportunity to actually breathe and surrender to that discomfort. Just accept 
that it is uncomfortable, but assign a new meaning to the discomfort. Almost not only assigning a new meaning, like maybe reframing the experience, like this is making me stronger. That's one way of kind of surrendering to it or reframing. Another way is actually kind of disassociating in your mind from that discomfort. It's a weird psychological thing we can do when like if something, if some part of your body is really in pain, if you really focus on it, you can either exaggerate in your whole mind, in your mind and say, oh my gosh, this hurts so badly. I feel like I'm dying. These generalizations and distortions of reality or the reality we're experiencing, they actually cause us to exaggerate um, that feeling of pain or discomfort if we focus on it too much and really buy into it. You can actually, through focusing, breathing through it, you can actually isolate that pain to the very specific part in your body where it exists. Instead of feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed by the pain and letting it just fill up your entire awareness, you can get really specific with where exactly that pain is and kind of put it in a different place in your perception. I don't know if this makes sense. If, if any of you guys have really tried um, altering your mindset to improve your ability to perform or get through difficult circumstances, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you haven't yet tried that, tried that, try it. When you're uncomfortable, breathe through it, focus inward and really try to pinpoint exactly where that pain or discomfort is and then feel like it's far away from you. Disassociate from it in your mind and I promise you, if you get good at this, it really works. The other thing is to take the work seriously but not yourself too seriously. I think we've all heard this um, I think it's an extremely important concept. A lot of times dancers can mesh their work and what they do so much with who they think they are that any sort of deficiency in what they can do immediately impacts the way they feel about themselves. Like we have such like this tight bond between these two different things. Like we think they're the same thing. I am what I do. I am what I can do. I am what I achieve. This is not a really healthy way to live because what happens whenever you are having an off day, no matter how much you push, you're not as capable as yesterday. This is normal. You know, we're not always getting better every single day. We're learning every single day, hopefully, but we're not in practice always producing better results. That's just life. So what happens whenever we have an off day and your identity and what you can do are just like this? You feel terrible about yourself. So you have to separate your sense of identity from what you're able to do. And honestly, that's what I help some of my clients with. I help them understand, and my mindset coaching clients, I help them understand who they are on a more fundamental level so they can see who the separation between who they are and what they can do. And then also some ways that they can connect in a healthy way so that they can live with a more healthy sense of identity and a healthy sense of self-worth instead of constantly depending on success to make them feel good about themselves. This is a really crucial process to go through. Anyway, number two is you cannot make excuses for your off days. You can't, well, you can, just please don't. Please do not constantly make excuses or justifications or stories when you just had an off performance. Everybody has off days. Also, I'm convinced that a lot of dancers love to remember like the peak experience of them performing better than they had ever in their entire lives and they hold that as their new like daily standard. Sure, we're high achievers. It's not a bad thing to be a high achiever and to hold yourself to a high standard. But when dancers attach their expectations for themselves to like their best performance they've ever had in their life and like only feel good about themselves if they just meet that again or exceed it. I don't think that's super, super healthy. I think we need a more moderate approach um, in understanding how we can do our very, very best every day, but not get so attached to a super specific outcome. One is intention, one is outcome. They're different things. But anyway, I think that many dancers just get so wrapped up in their insecurity of feeling like they don't want other people to see them make a mistake or to have an off day. I know I've 
used to do this so often. I used to, you know, have an off rehearsal or something. And then instantly I wanted like everybody to know that my right point shoe was dead and that's why I missed my turn and blah, 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 blah. You know, we've all been this dancer. We've all been around this dancer um, who can't just let the mistakes be or the off performance be. Like, just let it be there. It is what it is. Instead of going on this like journey to like, cushion your ego by telling everybody like, oh, my point shoe was just dead and that's why I was having an off show. Instead of just being like, it was an off show, whatever. I think if you catch yourself always wanting everybody else to know why you were off, that probably is really pointing to a deep insecurity you have. And I'm not trying to like judge anyone for that. By no means. Dancing is a super vulnerable thing. So I completely understand. But you need to be okay with that vulnerability of people seeing your best and your worst. Just be okay with it. And the more responsibility you can take for your mistakes, actually the more you'll improve, I I really believe. So don't make excuses. Take responsibility for it. Now don't shame or judge yourself for it so much. (laughs) Everybody has off days but you can take responsibility by just giving an honest assessment within yourself of what you could do better next time. That's it. Number three, and I want to read what I wrote down because I swear if I use slightly off language in this point, I'm gonna offend some people. I really, really, really take body image stuff very seriously and I do not want to inspire anybody to feel badly about themselves. I just try to give realistic advice for what the expectations are within the field and to help you as best I can like be prepared for that. So number three is consistently not being near your personal best shape as a result of not eating healthily or doing any cross training. So I'm not trying to say that if you're not sticks thin, like get over it, push through it, get that way. Not at all. But I do believe that everyone has their personal best shape that they can pursue through taking care of themselves and being able to do that in a sustainable way, a sustainable mentally and physically healthy way. Like you need to be eating healthily. I mean, that definition of healthy is different for everybody. I would recommend seeking out solid nutritional advice from people like the the whole dancer, Jess Spinner, the whole dancer, to the point nutrition. Um, I don't think to the point nutrition advocates for a vegan lifestyle. I don't know. I'm biased in that way. I'm like, go vegan. Don't listen to me. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a nutritionist, okay? But I'm just saying that you need to be eating healthily, whole foods, have a healthy relationship with food, and really do your best through honoring your body with good food and also cross training. If you are not pursuing a healthy, strong, fit body, like, and as good as that gets for you personally through sustainable practices, then you just have to do better. I don't want to talk too much about this because I know it's a super sensitive topic. If I've caused any confusion or if you feel like this has inspired you to judge yourself or worry or feel bad about yourself, please don't. You can absolutely feel free to message me on Instagram if you have any questions about this or maybe go check out The Whole Dancer. I think Jess does amazing work with her health coaching for dancers. Um, Yeah, go check her out. Um, But if I've misspoken, please give me the chance to (laughs) answer any sort of questions or concerns. You can message me on Instagram. But I do think it's important to just know that at least I've seen many dancers, especially in college environments, just be like, eh, college, whatever, I'm going to go get Pop-Tarts out of the vending machine. And then they would also say, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed about auditions this spring, like company auditions. And I'm like, well, I mean, are you really helping yourself to be prepared by eating Pop-Tarts and like Cheetos? Like, don't screw yourself over. I'm just, I'm just advocating for being mindful and thoughtful. Okay. Number four is having a bad attitude. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. I'm 
This one gets my goat. Seriously, you can get into a company with a bad attitude, but the likelihood that you will keep your job and over the years that you might want to be there be favored within the company, the likelihood of achieving a happy, healthy, sustainable career with a bad attitude is slim. It's slim, okay? And even if you can manage a good career with a bad attitude, just don't. Just don't, please. Like, you want to be the kind of person who is kind towards their peers, who is respectful to the staff, who is level-headed, who has a good attitude and does not bring their peers down in order to make them feel good about themselves. Don't be that person. You know, apply yourself, work hard, have a good attitude. Whenever I think honestly, what gets a lot of dancers into this trap of getting stuck in a bad attitude is when they feel like they are entitled to certain results or certain things. Mm. I'm going to talk about entitlement in a second, but you have to be grateful for your chance to dance. You have to be grateful for every day. Honestly, gratitude gets you through so many of the challenging aspects of this career. I know having a bad attitude can mean so many different things, but I've just seen a lot of dancers who are entitled. They don't treat their peers very well. They're really self-centered and um, will just kind of bring their emotions into the studio. People can tell when you only care about yourself. Don't do that. Have a good attitude. Be grateful. Be compassionate. Be thoughtful. Apply yourself. Work hard. And make sure that every day you're living by the rule that the proof is in the pudding. Which honestly means to me that you need to show up every day and apply yourself, take nothing for granted, assume nothing, feel entitled to nothing, just enjoy the work because that's honestly what you're going to be doing when you get into the company. If you don't love the work, you don't love the journey, you're screwed. <laughs> Number five is not knowing the choreography. I really don't need to explain this one too much, but I'll tell you, not we all know like the downsides of not knowing the choreography you just have to know most of the time but here's what it really looks like to live up to the basic standard if you've been you know with the group being taught choreography you need to show up to every rehearsal remembering what was talked about in the previous rehearsal or remembering the choreography that was taught in the previous rehearsal and the corrections, both of those things. In class, you need to be really focused. I mean, we can't expect 100% perfection, but you have to be sharp. You have to know the combinations. Um, you have to really be present, be focused. You have to know your learning style. I, I think, well, you don't have to. It's just, I think it's really helpful to know the way that the method that allows you to learn best, like know if you're a visual learner, kinesthetic, auditory, and kind of just adapt the way that you receive information to make sure like it really stays in there. Um, I have some videos on this, how to learn choreography quickly. I'll try to remember to put a card in here linking it. Um, but then also like if you really want to advance in your career, usually the kind of dancers who move ahead are the ones who go above and beyond in the learning department. They will understudy when they're not asked to. They'll step into another role and be able to do that part in addition to their own part. I mean, not dancing it at the same time, but knowing the choreography. You need to um, really be with it to follow um, the directions of whoever's leading the rehearsal. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about this too much more because I think we all know. I hope we all know. If you don't, comment down below. I'll give you some more examples. Um, but yeah, next point. Okay, now number six, we get to talk about entitlement. You cannot be entitled. Here's what I mean by that. You cannot feel like you are owed certain results, like a contract, parts, whatever, just based off of your previous achievements or the favor you've had previously, your pedigree. I have seen so many dancers get all disappointed when they don't get a contract or a certain part and they're like, well, so-and-so 
has never been in a company before. Like, why does she get the apprenticeship or whatever? I've been in so-and-so whatever second company. Yes, you have experience. But if strategically, like, when it comes down to into, like, we're in the studio. If one dancer is honestly applying themselves more, they're the kind of employee that a director wants to have and they're a good dancer, it's almost like the resumes get tossed out the window when you're in the studio and you just have to prove yourself every day. You have to work every day and know that, I mean, not everybody gets all the parts all the time. Like, it's not realistic to just insist that you deserve all the parts, the contract, whatever, because of what you've achieved before. We're not all going to get the number one spot all the time. It just happens. You just have to roll with it. Stay humble. Work for the results. Prove through your work ethic and through your dancing that you're the kind of dancer who would excel in a certain role. But don't expect that it's like owed to you. This part is owed to you because you've been here longer. Just don't be entitled. Just don't be entitled. Number seven. (laughs) Last but not least. You guys probably thought I was just going to be talking about work ethic stuff and having a bad attitude. No, no, no. This is for all those quiet, meek little baby Trinas all the people who feel reserved, and I'm not trying to make fun of you at all. I know there are lots of people who just identify as introverted. There's nothing wrong with that, and you can still have a great career. Um, You don't have to be a ham and to be like super out there and extroverted to be successful, but here's the thing. For all, like, okay, you just can't be overly timid or shy. It just irks me that so many dancers say that they want to be a principal dancer one day, they like want to have their name in lights, but then when they have the chance, they don't want to stand front and center. What? That's not congruent. You can't want to have your name in lights and to be a successful dancer and to have people notice you at the very least and put you in that solo you've already always wanted to dance. If you aren't showing that you want to be in the front and that you belong there and you have confidence in the front, you have to be totally okay with being seen. You have to want to be seen. Like when the rubber meets the road, you have to want to be seen. When you're in an audition, you have to want to be seen. So many dancers are like, oh God, I hope I don't get that number right next to the table. You know what? If your number, if you're lined up in numerical order and you get to you get to dance right in front of the judges table, what most dancers think is, "Oh my gosh, they're going to see my mistakes." And I'm like, "If you paid so much money to go fly to that audition and you would rather be in the back corner, what the heck are you doing here? You have to be just hungry to be in the front, like honestly, I know some people have different opinions on that. It's just that if you want attention, don't say that and then be like, oh no, you stand in the front. Oh no, you know like the dancers who will line up for Grand Allegro or something and then at the last second, they're like standing towards the front of the group of four and at the last second, like the prep is about to happen and they're like, oh no, 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 you go in front and then they screw up the like the formation You can't do that. Get in the front, okay? You cannot use the excuse of being a naturally reserved person for not wanting to have your dancing be seen. Because if you want to be a professional dancer, you are asking to be paid to be seen. So you have to love it. Learn to love it, even though it's nerve-wracking. It's vulnerable. Yeah, eat it up. Get up there, okay? I'm stepping off my soapbox. That's it. Okay. Okay, you guys. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit saucy. It was a bit spicy. You know, I kicked your butt a little bit, but you guys know I like to kick you in the butt, kiss you on the forehead. I'm, I'm your cheerleader. I'm here for you. I love sharing this stuff. I'm, I'm going to be real. I'm always going to be real, but I'm also here to help you deal with some of the harsh realities. So 
that's what I'm here for. That's what I talk about on my YouTube channel. That's the kind of information I present. So I wish you all much success as you define it personally. I hope that you have an amazing week and I will see you in the next video.